you look, you know, you see this. Uh, then there, then once in a while there is this great one sitting in the back, just sitting back there. Is uh, often it's a he, and his his feet hardly reach the ground, although he's very tall. And this is uh, one of the Gothic remnants among us. Just just there, you know. Uh, by the way, speaking of the Gothic, have you ever looked up at the Chrysler Building? Uh, they're, they're really going to have a field day when they dig up the top of the Chrysler Building. Have you ever looked up there at the top of the Chrysler Building? It's made out of that chrome and stainless steel and all that stuff. And sticking out from the, from the eaves up there, I don't know whether, do, do skyscrapers have eaves? Uh, <laughs> uh, sticking out of the eaves on the four corners, it is the Chrysler Building, isn't it? that I keep seeing over there. I don't know the names of these buildings. What is the building that changes color all the time? Every time I look at it, it's blue and then it's pink and it's orange at night. What building is that? Is that the General Electric building? I see. I notice uh, <laughs> ever since that big trial, that case, is, it doesn't change color anymore. It just stays over there, somber, unchanging color ever since, you know, that you remember. All, it was all in the papers. You remember all that stuff. All those guys went to jail and all that. They're saving on electric lights and stuff over there now. You know that it's, it's a, this is the austerity business. But they're, they're up on the top, looking over the edge of that that uh, parapet there, the Chrysler Building. There are four enormous stainless steel gargoyles. Have you seen them? Looking out over New York, have you seen them? They're huge. They're fantastic. And I'm a kid, you see. This is the first time I have ever come into contact with New York. There was a very peculiar movie which uh, played in all the, all the neighborhood theaters when I'm a kid. And I'm, of course, New York always, whenever there was a picture of New York on the screen, it always showed Times Square, right in the middle. You know, Times Square, all the horns going, ah, 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 excitement, Gene Kelly, music, George Gershwin, the whole business, you know. <laughs> and and, and this, this is the kind of view that most people outside of New York have of New York. What was the sign that you always saw looking north on Times Square, inevitably, in every movie that ever showed Times Square? What was it? I will award the brass figligi to others who have been singed in the same flame. What was that sign? I'll never forget coming to New York and being fantastically, just completely... Uh, Oh, I, I can't describe the disappointment. One, that sign was gone. It is not there anymore. <laughs> and, and there was no Gene Kelly, and it wasn't raining. And I didn't hear all those horns beeping, and there wasn't George Gershwin playing. Nothing. It just... Of course, this is another story. But I, I can remember this picture. This is where the gargoyles come in, and Miss Bundy gets her due. These gargoyles appeared in a picture about New York. And I'm a kid, you know, and I'm living there, sitting dark down on the seat there, covered with a covered with a baby Ruth candy bar that they had given free. It was a kind of a payola to get the kids in the theater there. And I'm sitting there covered with chocolate, and on came this thing about about New York, where somebody was trapped on the top of buildings, and they kept going from one building to the next. And it was one of these things where guys are hanging out of the parapets, and you can see the streets four miles below. Well, one of the things they hung on was one of those enormous stainless steel gargoyles. It was wild, and this guy was hanging on to the mouth of these gargoyles. And you could see all of New York spread out below there. Little did I realize that I would be spread out all over New York myself in my own lifetime with no more identity than that. I could just see this thing down there. And boy, it was wild. I, can, I, I know that millions of people were, were terribly influenced by that picture. It is the Chrysler Building, isn't it? And then one other time after that, I saw a picture of Margaret Burke White. Again, I'm a kid, see? And I'm in, in high school, and I'm looking at magazines. I'm in the high school library, and there's a picture of Margaret Burke White, a female-type photographer, sitting on the head of that, that stainless steel gargoyle with a speed graphic or a, or a Leica or a Nikon or something, taking some insane picture of New York. And someone took a picture of her, and she was suspended hanging out over, over what appeared to be a, a total abyss, populated only by tiny moving shades of infinite danger, sitting on the head of a stainless steel gargoyle. What a better picture of modern civilization. I mean, I just thought you ought to know. Would you like to join in on the second chorus, please? Come. That's it. Oh, yes, Miss Bundy. Miss Bundy was a doer. 
played the piano and organized hikes. And whenever the Red Cross would have a clean-up day, they used to have clean-up days. And everyone would go out and pick junk up. And junking was, for that one day, was very legal. And this is the sort of thing Miss Bundy would do. And one day, Mr. Spencer, who was the, the, the principal of this poor little festering school where we, where we struggled to gain just the shade of knowledge of, the, of the, in, the entire scope and just maybe perhaps even kiss the robe of the vast curtain. Now, of course, we're mixing metaphors here. The reason I'm mixing metaphors here is because this is the only way man lives. He lives by constantly shifting from one frame to the next in his world, and hardly any frame connects very well with the next frame, or the one before it, or the one after it, or the one that went 2,000 years before. Well, I'm sitting there, see, and Mr. Spencer says, we're going to have a movie today. And uh, if you remember, they were always showing movies in school that were sponsored by automobile companies, safety movies, on why you shouldn't get run over by Chevys. And so... Uh, <laughs> oh, this is an embarrassing thing. He said, Miss Bundy, I understand you know how to operate the projector. Miss Bundy was one of these women who never admits that she can't do anything, whether it's play Columbia, the gem of the ocean on the piano, or organize whatever she was always organizing, a human pin cushion. She said, of course, Mr. Spencer, I can. Well, we all filed into the gym. They're all, you know, 500 kids are all sitting on their duffs, sitting around there. And somebody unrolled, the, you know, had the shade. Miss Robinette ordinarily operated the, ordinarily operated the machine. You see, and Miss Bundy was her standby. Nothing is worse than to see a standby rush out on the stage, uh, a stand-in rush out on the stage, the poor understudy, and lay a gigantic egg at one brief moment. You know, we always have this this secret thing that if they ever gave us the chance, we'd make it. You know, we'd really make it. Oh no. Let's face it. If, if most of us, I'd say a good 95% of us ever got the chance, we would do what we always do, flub it. We would flub it, and what's worse, we would flub it in front of everybody, and you don't really want your chance. You know that, Ed? Because you can always kid yourself all of your life that if you ever get your big chance, you're going to really swing. And that's why you're terribly afraid that someday you are going to get your big chance. So you better not do it, you know. Don't push. Don't rock the boat. Sit back. It's much better to complain, you know. I find it's much better to sit down here on channel 4,228 and just complain, you know, all oh, that rotten stuff they're all doing, all the big guys, <laughs> rotten, rotten. Of course, this is all part of it, you see. Well, Miss Bundy finally got her chance to operate the projector. She had been Miss Robinette's, Miss Robinette's standby, the understudy. Somehow, I, I, I can't see myself as anything other than an understudy. I have a great, great compassion for understudies, really. I don't know what it is. is this a, you know, there, there is something, something, uh, I don't know, there's something very significant about understudyism as a world. You know, some people have made a whole career of understudying. They don't want to play anything, secretly. And, and there's a, oh, an awful thing happens when they get the call. Well, Miss Bundy got the call that day. And we're all sitting in the gym, and it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's getting hot. And you get 500 little clunkers sitting there on their duffs in the afternoon waiting for the waiting for the movie about safety and it gets a little sticky well back in the back of the gym they had this thing set up and miss B <laughs> oh gee, it was terrible i can't i cannot describe it to you miss bundy is trying to thread it up see it was a sound on film thing <laughs> and she's trying to thread it up pretending all the while she knows well all the kids you know we automatically assume the teachers know everything Miss Bundy said she's going to do it. She's going to do it. Mr. Spencer standing over there by the wall. And there's about four other teachers standing over there with their backs up against the place where the kids did their things, you know, swung up and down on the rings. And we're waiting for the movie to start. Well, <laughs> Miss, Bu Miss Bundy plugged the speaker in. I don't know where she plugged it in. I think she must have plugged it into the mic input jack. It was a fantastic howl. Well, this went on for about 30 seconds, and it was a real wild howl, and hardly any of us had ever heard feedback in our lives before. And you know what feedback can be like in a gym with 500 easily panicked kids. <laughs> and she's frantically unplugging. Finally, she gets it unplugged. Mr. Spencer says, uh, would you like a little help, Miss Bundy? She says, oh, no, 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 no. Just a little thing here. I see Miss Robinette was using the other side of the switch. <laughs> yes, I use the other side, you know. <laughs> She's ad-libbing. 
We're all sitting there on our duffs. And she continues to fool around back there. Well, it's getting hotter and hotter in the gym. And the kids are getting sweatier and sweatier. And, you know, once in a while a kid has to, you know, he weighs his hand. They let him go and they go down the hall. And it's getting, finally, <laughs> finally she gets the thing going. How? I will never know. But they turned out the lights and the machine started to go. Well, we should have known that it was going to be disaster. I mean, just by the beginning. Let me tell you this. If a guy gets you out, I saw this one time happen on a ship. I'm going to tell you about the time they, uh, on a ship. Now, I'm not deviating from the story because it's part of it. They were going to fire a gigantic missile, which cost $42,000, the taxpayers, money. They got this thing all loaded up. Everything, and somebody blew a fuse. Well, I should have suspected right away uh, I, that, that it was going to be, because if you, if you flub in the beginning, it is almost, almost a rule of thumb that it's going to continue all the way through. Well, Miss Bundy, I'll tell you some night what happened with that missile. Oh, boy. $42,000 in 400, 400 fathoms of water. I saw it go overboard. Whew, and it made a sizzling sound when it went over. Everybody flat on the deck, holding their head down with their tin hats down. Oh, what a moment. Well, anyway, Miss Bundy has got this thing going, and the cars are going back and forth, and the music is playing, and everything's going. And then finally it says, the end. This has been a public service presentation of the General Motors Corporation. <laughs> Mr. Spencer turns on the lights. And behind Miss Bundy was a pile of tangled 35-millimeter film that was six and a half feet high. The pile was over 20 feet in circumference. It made the Gordian knot look like a granny knot. A fantastic pile of film. And nobody said anything for a second. It was an enormous, it was bigger than Miss Bundy, who weighed over 320 pounds. Mr. Spencer said, what is that? Oh, yeah, just a just moment. And she started to pick at it. You know, it's terrible when she's sort of picking at it like she's going to stick it in the machine again or something. Well, everyone saw that this had been one of those gigantic boo-boos. It was a terrible, embarrassing moment. And, and all the kids are sort of filing out, and we're all going back. And, and Mr. Spencer said, Mr. Spencer says, Well, all of you children in Miss Bundy's class, will you please file back to your classroom? Miss Bundy will be in very shortly. Well, we all went back into our classroom. Of course, immediately the fist fight starts and all the kids start hollering. And you know, it's, it's sad how, how kids completely miss the point of these things that happen. Well, we're, we're hitting each other and hollering, pushing sandboxes around. And about 15 minutes later, in comes another teacher. And she says, I'm going to stay here until Miss Bundy comes back. Well, the afternoon dragged on. We had this other clown in there. And about 15 minutes before, before the time to dismiss, in came Miss Bundy, and her face is all red and puffed. All puffed and red. And it was a funny thing, you know. Uh, we're, we're, we're sitting around, all the kids. Miss Bundy comes back, and she sits down at her desk, and she starts to cry. Can you remember ever seeing a teacher cry when you were a kid? It's a terrible moment. Total, utter, thorough fiasco. And of course, all the kids, ha, 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 oh, Lady Bundy, ha, 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 oh, Lady Bundy, please, would you like to sing another chorus with me? Just one more. And you know, Ed, hold it. I have to tell you the aftermath of this. Funny thing about Miss Bundy, Miss Bundy was totally round, and she had the kind of dresses that were sort of stretched over her. You know, what is this kind of dress? Is there sort of, is there a dress, is there a, a, a material called crepe? Is there really such a material? Well, Miss Bundy wore crepe material all the time. I heard the phrase, it was kind of stretched and it would give, it was stretchy kind of material. And it was very tight. And Miss Bundy, Miss Bundy was a kindergarten teacher, as I say. And she lived all of her life that way, as far as I know. And then I remember one thing, a very sad, odd, strange moment that I felt. I had forgotten completely about Miss Bundy. Like you forget about everything. In the end, eventually. 
I had forgotten completely about Miss Bundy. And if you recall, during the war, a lot of misguided but well-meaning people had the idea that what they ought to send the guys off in the front, they ought to send them a newspaper from home. You know? Get the newspaper from home. And I used to... Uh, they, they, they'd say, uh, mail call. You know, and everybody's getting... I'd get 400 pounds of this rotten newspaper. Great big loads of them. And I'd th it was loaded up. And I always had to dig a hole and bury them. They didn't want them spread around wherever we were. So I get all these newspapers. I never could read them. So one night, I got a newspaper. And it was one of the rare times I ever opened this newspaper from home. I'm sitting there picking my teeth after chow or something. And I'm just flaked out on the ground and I'm looking at the newspaper and I'm going through it and there is a picture of Miss Bundy. And it says, Miss Bundy, ex-school teacher, dies at the age of 67. Miss Bundy! I mean, it's like this is inevitable. It goes on. Miss Bundy! And all I can remember was that gigantic pile of film and that puffed red face and all of us hollering, old lady Bundy, old lady Bundy. Miss Bundy died. And I suppose I'm the only one who remembers... No, no, there can't be. There must be others. Would you like to sing another chorus, please? That's it. That's the chorus we want to sing. It's for all of us. Huh. Uh. Uh. What you got to do is you got to bait the hook, you know. Got to do your share of bailing, Dad. Uh huh. Yes. All right, George, you did get that cheese, didn't you? <laughs> Speaking of cheese, uh, we have with us tonight Prexies. If you're scouting around looking for a hamburger that fights back, we would like to recommend Prexies. In fact, I think no. Prexies is all up and down Lexington, and there's one in the village, just off of Village Square, 8th Street and 6th Avenue. And there will be the aura of love. Eh, pretty good hamburger. Also, Prexies, they're open. There is a sanctuary. Of course, each man clings to what little he can cling to. Bobbing up and down like a cork. George, uh, is there anybody out there quickly got a got a dictionary who has a good definition of the Sargasso Sea? <laughs> George is getting me in the shoulder. Every time I move this way, oh boy, Sargasso. Oh yes, yeah. speaking of Sargasso Seas, we have with us the General Tire dealer. He says if you are looking for a set of new rubber for that poor old sad Hulk you're driving. I would suggest you consult your general tire dealer. Now, now, I, I don't uh, believe, uh, I don't believe it's all been said. It never will all be said. And that is, that is truly the only thing that stands between us and total madness. Because I, I rather suspect that if man ever found out the total truth about what it all means, Oh, I mean, you know, you can't. I mean, you don't want you don't want to know this, not really. Come on, follow the bouncing ball. How would you like to sing a chorus or two of Red Sails in the Sunset? Would you, Ed? That's it. Come on, Red Sails in the Sunset. Oh uh, no, excuse me. Uh, I can't remember the lyrics. I keep reading. Hello, hello, test. Hello, hello, test. Are you here? Hello, 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 hello. That feels better now, doesn't it? Sometimes there are places you just can't scratch. You know? I mean, you know, in mixed company, I suppose. I, it, it depends on how mixed the company is, actually. You get right down to it. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, our public service announcement. Uh, this is a public service announcement. Uh, pass it along to your friends. Everything's going to be <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Just, just, just repeat that to yourself several times. And uh, I suggest you try tasty yeast. It's handy. 
and it's dandy for your appetite. And uh, you can eat it day or night, and it contains vitamins, minerals, and uh, uh, everything is going to be all right. Okay? Okay? Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, oh, you got the cheese after all, didn't you, my charge? They can't fool a really sharp white mouse, can they? <laughs> uh, can't push you around, boy.